Okay, in this video I'm going to tell a few stories of things that happened to me, really short, uh, I'm going to try, and just see how, what you think about them, how you see it, I'm going to say a little bit about how I see them. I have mentioned in another video that I um, have a whole bunch of notes that I've written over maybe a year and I want to get through them, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of um, more of videos where I put more than one thing. So this is going to have one more than one story, but this, these are ones that actually happened. And just see what you think. How do you, do you see it? Who or what would you see as toxic or some just say narcissistic abuse or just somebody trying to, you know, have narcissistic behaviors or histrionic behaviors, any kind of behaviors that are negative. So they don't have, none of this is going to be diagnosed or and one size doesn't fit all, all that. Read my um, description in the um, below, below this video on YouTube. And, yeah. Okay, like I said, I'm going to try to make them short. And they're longer than I'm going to do. But much longer. Like years ago, many years ago, I had a minivan. And it was a little old. And um, I mean, I'm talking many years ago. And I was traveling to go to my mother's, where my mother was living, you know, our old home, um, our own home when I grew up, the home I grew up in. And she, she passed five years ago. But I was traveling there from here, I think, this area in north central Texas. And it's about a seven hour drive or somewhere, it just depends on traffic really, of course. And um, on my way that that minivan I had back then, it started, uh, it wouldn't go over 60 miles per hour and it would shake and it seemed to be running hot and so much going wrong with it. So I pulled off the highway and um, back then we didn't really, I don't think cell phones were all that common. I think I might have had one. I don't think so. So I think I had to use a pay phone. They actually had pay phones back then. And you know, call one of my sisters, you know, I was in between where two of my sisters lived, okay, and they, they lived on opposite ends, you know, like one lived north, let's see, northeast of there, and the other one lived southwest of there, and I was somewhere in between, out in the boonies, out in the country, so I called them and said, I don't know what to do, you know, they said, well, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, we, we don't, they, neither one of them knew what I could do, and so, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my car. Okay, but my minivan, and I didn't have AAA back then. Didn't even think to to get AAA. I'd have AAA now. You betcha, and have for years. But anyway, see, I'm going to make this long if I don't get through. But anyway, so I'm standing out there, and I see this guy. It was kind of like you know, it was the place where I was was a really small, very small town, off the highway, and. I saw this guy and I basically asked him if he could tell me, you know, help me, you know, does he know anything about cars? And he did. Okay, so I left from there and I called my sister. Yeah, I did have a cell phone then. I called my uh, sister, oh, I guess once I, yeah, because it kept, kept cutting out because of, you know, small town and all that. So when I got into a range, you know, where I could call her and I called the, one of them. And she said, I knew you'd do that. You, I knew you'd, you'd play the damsel in distress so good. I'm thinking, I don't recall playing damsel in distress because, yeah, like it's playing because that time I was a damsel in distress. <laughs> but then I thought about it and there was one other time something happened in my, that same minivan and this guy at work helped me with it. You know, <laughs> what was wrong with that? But she found, she tried hard to say something was wrong with that and she kept on you know from there like I said I'm trying to do a short version of this but yeah to make it look like that I was um, somehow manipulating men when all I was doing is saying hey I don't know what to do you see okay here's another story um, it's short version is that I knew this guy years ago again years ago and um, he as I learned he had this he was older than I as he had this thing of, well, what he would do is go to, there's a certain fast food restaurant, I guess you call it, and they they are very Christian. They're very, um, that's their thing is they, they do things like 
for example, if a homeless person goes there, or used to be, I don't know if it is now, but if a homeless person goes there, they, um, they feed them, they give them a meal. You know, they say that the homeless person says, I'm homeless and hungry, they would give a meal for, for free. Um, that is something I found out about this guy, is that he wasn't homeless, he had the money, but he did. He would do that so he didn't have to pay for things. He was, he was really like this, you know. And that's the type of person, you know, they take advantage of things that are meant to be good, and it takes away from the people who need it. You know, this is very charitable, but he's taking advantage of it. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was the only kind of things he did, you know, but like I said, I had learned over time that this guy was like this. Last I heard, I think the guy had moved to a different part of Texas with a woman he married into her home. Um, yeah. So he's taking advantage of somebody else is my guess, but I don't want to, yeah. Who knows? But have you known people like this? They will take advantage of something, like I just said, they're, they're so greedy. They're so, I don't know, just they're, they're that low, low class that they will take advantage of something that's meant for the needy. Now, I can imagine these people going in, you know, yeah, you can, you can imagine, right? Okay, so as I said, I had written a bunch of notes the other day about old stories, or did I say this? Um, stories from my past, some of them are related to toxic people, some of them aren't. It's just more of one of those the kinds that, what would you do, what would you say, what would you think? Um, or just stories. <laughs> so like I, like I said, I have a whole bunch of notes and I want to get through these. I want to do these videos so I can get rid of these notes and start a new, you know, have new kind of videos. But I have this other, you know, this other one that I wrote down. Like I said, they're not all related to narcissism. So and that's where I'm going is changing this. Okay, this one, this one I wrote down, well, it starts back years ago, many years ago when I was a teenager. And I have a sister who's 15 months older than I, and one of my sisters, I have three, and she had a Dodge Dart that was, I don't know, I think it was as old as she, and it was a blue, baby blue Dodge Dart with, uh, if you've ever, if you can look them up, baby blue Dodge Dart with um, shag carpet that was multicolored, you know, like pastel was like white, I think white, pink, and blue, and green, I don't know, you know, but, I mean, it also had an 8-track, okay, 8-track, <laughs> that, that kind of gives you an idea of how old it is, I don't know what year it was, the model was, but yeah, she had one of those, and then late, years later, I had a Dodge Dart, a different, you know, a newer model, and it was green, but it didn't have anything wild about it, like shag carpet. No, no real reason to tell about her Dodge Dart, but it, you know, I was thinking about Dodge Dart, so I wrote it down about hers. It was, it was fun. It was like a box, <laughs> driving a box down the road. But my Dodge Dart I had years ago. I don't still have it, of course. But um, I was, it was um, back then. I used to travel a lot. I'm talking traveling from North California to. Uh, the South Florida Keys and many points in between, road trips. But this one, I think I was coming back from my parents' house at the time. I think both of them were still alive. And it was a time where people didn't have cell phones. Okay, I don't think that they were even out. I don't know. They, you, know you know, some things were out before people, the, uh, just the general public gets it. But I didn't have a cell phone. It was tra I was traveling with Adam and he. I was driving that. Dodge Dart. He was driving one of our other, I don't know what we had back then, and we were this long seven hour trip and it was night time. And we were traveling, and this was in Texas where you have a lot of land and sometimes you're way out in the boonies between these two places. Okay, so anyway, you know, I don't even know what words like boonies, I know what they mean, I know what they mean to me, but I don't know, you know, if I looked them up, what would it say? Boonies to me means you're way out in a country where there's hardly anything around. Um, nobody, no hardly anybody. But anyway, we were driving back and we were somewhere in between. No cell phones, remember, uh, out in the boonies. And um, 
we had stopped at a convenience store. That was just, it was surrounded by woods. You know, I have this convenience store. And, you know, filled up with gas, something like this. And we were getting back on the highway. No street lights, no lights at all anywhere. It was just pitch dark. And we were getting back on the highway. He was in front of me and um, you know, on the entrance ramp. And he went up. Well, I got on the entrance ramp and my car died. Okay, no cell phones, boonies, no lights out. So I'm sitting there going, what am I going to do? I couldn't get it to start back in my Dodge Dart. I couldn't get it to start back up. Couldn't move it. You know, I'm on the entrance. What if somebody come from that convenience store and try to get on? They, it had no lights. It had no, it had, the battery was basically dead. And so nobody was going to see the, anything. The caution lights, nothing. Because there were no caution lights. And here I am standing out there, a woman alone, and no cell phone. Okay. That, that um, convenience store wasn't all that close. There were a bunch of woods in between there, and the, plus the entrance onto the highway was long. So I would have had to walk quite a bit to get back to the only place out there, which was that convenience store, to use a payphone. No cell phones, remember? And pitch dark and I was scared like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I was scared but still at the same time annoying. This is what I have to do and if I see anybody, how am I going to flag people down so they don't run into my uh, car when they're going on to try to get on the highway. Horrible scene, you know. So, you know, trying to figure out what, what can you do. No flashlight. Yeah, learn to, to carry a flashlight with you something. And, um, uh, not like I have one in my car. <laughs> I have a flashlight, yeah. But anyway, so I started walking back, and guess what happened? I mean, this was like, I say out in the boonies, but it was more like uh, Redneck City. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a redneck. Redneck City. And uh, so I started walking back, and here comes this old beat-up truck with three guys in the front of it yelling at me, cat calls, this kind of thing, scaring the ever-living crap out of me, okay, and in in it's pitch dark outside. Now, what would you do? Seriously, what would you have done? Now, think about that. Would you have sat in that Dodge Dart that's on the uh, entrance ramp to the highway where nobody can see you? Mm, probably not. Yeah, that could be very dangerous. Would you, you're sitting duck, would you try to walk back to the, um, you know, to the convenience store. Well, I did, but you see what happened. So it's one of those, you know, there wasn't anything really to do kind of situations. Well, luckily, Adam had saw that my lights had went out. He was, like I said, he was way ahead of me. You know, not way, but he was ahead of me. He saw that something happened. He, he couldn't see where I was. So he had to get off the highway, which was in, out in the boonies. It was kind of far off and turn around and come back. And it took him a little while, but once he did, once he got there, those guys, and that truck took off. Okay, left me alone. Luckily, I was very lucky. Okay. So, I mean, that's one of those situations. What would you do? Would that what, what would that kind of situation cause you? For me, like I said, I don't think it caused me like long-lasting trauma or anything, but it was a life lesson learned. You know, there wasn't anything I could do. Cell phones were out back then. I couldn't do that. But the whole thing of having flashing lights, you know, something. And like I said, I need to get some of those again. But I, I don't know. You know, cell phones these days, we have them. So you could call police. But that was a different time, different era. So I have one more story. Okay, I looked at that story. I mean, I know the story. But I looked what I'd written down. And I don't know if I should tell this story. Maybe I'll just leave it up as a question. Yeah, without telling the story to it. But where would be a donkey in the strangest place that you can imagine? That you hear a donkey. Where would that be? Yeah, I think that's enough of that story. But I do have one other one, which was, I don't know, maybe it should go on another video. It was more about my dog Marmaduke, because I mentioned him lately, a lot lately. And uh, he's doing much better. He can now walk again, and um, he eats. He's too, he tries to eat too much. His medication definitely made him that happen. 
But the story was basically about um, him having a squirrel moment. You know, I had my squirrel moments. But his cost me uh, a hurt arm and a hurt leg because he saw the squirrel. He went one way. That's why I call him Marmaduke. That's not his real name. <laughs> he went one way. I went the other. I was going the other, the direction I was walking in. And it was right. I was just about to step off a curb, you know, like to check the mail. You know, he stepped down and to get the mail. And he went the other direction after that squirrel, literal squirrel moment. And I uh, twisted my leg, twisted my arm because he pulled me so hard. He doesn't chase squirrels anymore, by the way. He doesn't chase them. He goes outside and all the rest of the animals just kind of, all the wildlife that I'm feeding these days, they just come up to him. They don't care. <laughs> he doesn't bother anybody. But yeah, I was going to talk about that story and um, I don't know what I was going to connect it to. I have to look at my notes again. But I did want to do some stories, just t telling some stories for a change. And I'm trying to do everything on this one channel that I used to do on other channels. Not everything. Nope, nope, not everything. But more, some some of them to the topic on the, um, that I had the channel name as now, some other ones. So, I think that was enough of the stories. I think that one, that one was on my mind was because, uh, we were, we were having roofers and, not roofers, but construction workers and roofers and all this kind of stuff happening that day when I was making this note. And, uh, I was having a problem or something. I don't know. I'm trying to read my notes. And my notes aren't that great. I can't even read my writing sometimes. Actually, it's kind of neat. People say my writing is really neat. Okay, I am rambling, and hey, I think I need to wrap this up. <laughs> I don't know how long this one's going to be, but I'm trying to do more than one in, uh, more than one topic or story, or like I've been saying, in this one in one video, each video, so I can get rid of these. Um, like I said. <laughs> And if you do two back to back, you might forget when you said what on which one. So, if you want to subscribe to this channel, click the circle. If you want to watch another video on this channel, click one of the rectangles. Like, subscribe, comment, and share on your own social media if you would. And I'll talk to you on another video. Bye.